So I'm guessing the title of this video gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're gonna do today. This time of year is actually very, very special to me because it's always when I get a lot of insp inspiration. Usually people on YouTube are like making stuff or costumes and that's really inspirational or I have some person in my life who gets really excited about a costume they wanna make and they commission me to go and make a part of it, usually with my 3D printer, especially since I got my 3D printer. So this year is no different and my friend's nine-year-old daughter has gotten like insanely into anime. I don't understand it, I'm not knocking anybody who does love it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't understand it. The second she started talking about this costume and showing me pictures of this moon staff or moon wander, whatever it is called, uh, I'm sorry, I still don't know what it's called, but uh, yeah, I, I saw it and it was just a beautiful looking object and that's really what I got attached to. This object is beautiful, it is interesting, and I was pretty sure that I could go and make a pretty great re uh, recreation of it for her. I did look on Etsy to go and see, you know, if anyone was selling STLs, not to buy because I'm not the per type of person that buys anything. I want to make it myself, but at least I want to see what other people have done and I was thoroughly unimpressed by most of it. So that kind of really drove me to go and make uh, a really good one because the ones she was looking at to buying were just garbage, garbage. And she deserves better than that. So um, yeah, let's go and hop in. So let's start off with the simple fact that I have no idea what I'm looking at. I'm pretty sure this was the first photo that was shown to me. I really fell in love with this photo and really liked how the shape and proportions were. This is really what I had in mind. After about five minutes of Googling and seeing a lot of photos like this, I stumbled upon this one right here. Before you jump into any modeling program, you really wanna go and study the, all your reference photos. You wanna have a game plan. So I wanna make this as easy to print and easy to paint as possible. So we're gonna make everything that is gold an individual piece. And this is what I came up with. I'll go and show an exploded view. This is actually version two. And uh, the first version didn't really have any of the really things necessary to put this together easy. There is a dowel here and a dowel there, and that'll make sure that these two align correctly. And then that dowel will go into a hole that is in the handle. So here's the G-code for the handle. I printed this separately since it is so tall with such a small base. There's a high chance of failure and it's only supposed to take nine and a half hours. The rest of the parts could go and fit on one build plate and be printed all at the same time. Printing at 0.1 millimeter layer height. It's only 11 hours, which seems like a lot, but for the level of detail I'm going here, I think 11 hours is not too bad. So let's throw this on the 3D printer. So we're done. We're done. Uh, we got all the pieces printed. The handle was printed separately from everything else, but everything else was able to fit on this build plate. We got the star and the little bottom of the handle thing right here. I don't know if it'll focus on it, but uh, I made some really rookie mistakes with this, which we will talk about in a second. But uh, otherwise, everything else turned out really, really well. Uh, the rookie mistake I made. Uh, 3D printing doesn't like overhangs. Even, you know, not really intense overhangs. So if you could see the bottom of the handle here, I don't know if it'll focus. Uh, it's really rough. It, it looks bad. It would have looked better if I printed it at like 0.2. I know the first version of this actually did uh, print out pretty well, but it didn't here. So I'm gonna have to reprint this piece and also the star, which also has some ugly boogery nonsense on the bottom. So pretty much anything that's kind of an overhang on here uh, did not turn out very well. I did get uh, that little dowel hole there for that. So the moon fits in and then the moon has a hole in it also for when these are glued together. I think it turned out pretty good. So let's go and rip these off the build plate. So I got my little sanding station set up here. Not a great idea to do it in your living room, but uh, it's warm here and my basement is too cold right now. So pretty much all you really need for a sanding setup to make sure that all your parts are flat, because remember, nothing is flat. Nothing is ever flat. Get a piece of pine or MDF or something. I had a piece of pine for like shelving and taped on a piece of 320 grit sandpaper, maybe 220 grit sandpaper, and uh, just kind of been going at all of the pieces. Started out with this, uh, the moon section. You want to go and always if you're designing a part, you always want to go and think about how am I going to print this? And soon it'll become second nature and you'll know exactly what to do and how you're going to go and print it. In this case, 
I need to take the moon in two separate pieces, cut it right down the middle, and print them flat. That would just get me the best layer lines, one millimeter layer height, and uh, it, it looks great. I've already sanded them down, and I glued in uh, two pieces of dowel. It'll make it easy for me to go and throw glue on this, and then when I take this other side and drop it down, it'll line up on those pins, and boom, it's perfectly aligned. There's no issues. Uh, I am gonna have to go and hold this together, uh, probably with a clamp. 3D printers do not like overhangs. We know this. You know, there's, if there's nothing underneath to go and hold up the filament, you know, at a certain angle, it's gonna go and get all droopy and weird. And it did with the bottom and also the bottom of the stars. So I went back to the drawing board and I took the bottom and I cut it in half. And I still got some goofy problems with that. We'll talk about in a second. And the star, I did the same thing. Uh, you know, cut it in half, printed them so there's no overhangs. It thought, I thought it was a good idea. It was a good idea, but I failed to turn off some important settings. You're playing around with your 3D printing settings, and I think on Prusa, it's automatically turned on the elephant's foot compensation. What that pretty much does is when you have your nozzle on your first layer, of course, the, you know, filament is going to come out, hit the build plate, and squish out just a little bit. So that setting just kind of brings that first layer in just a tinge to, you know, kind of compensate for that. And uh, the compensation was a little too much on this, and it caused a little bit of a gnarly line around the middle of both of these pieces. Uh, you know, so you could pretty much tell the cut line because it kind of sucks in on the cut line and goes back out to the regular geometry. That didn't work out, so these are garbage. We're not gonna deal with them anymore. Reprinted them without any of that compensation. I can deal with a little bit of a lip uh, at the cut line, just sand it down. And so there's the star all glued together, here's the bottom. The only other pieces that we're really worried about are the little ornament things that go on the side of the handle. These were printed flat on the build plate, so that top layer isn't perfect. So what I did was just take this little sandy sponge thing, and it just kind of knocked down any boogers or any weird stuff. I'll also use that to kind of make sure that there's no like lip where the two pieces come together. So everything's glued together. Super easy. This piece is one. There is a little bit of groove middle here. Not gonna be an issue if we have to fill a spot putty or something like that. But I, I, I love this part. I love everything in just raw 3D print. Put everything together and, and visualize what happened. I sanded uh, that a little bit, sanded the base a little bit, and then if we take that, where is it? Right there, boom, there it is. It's beautiful, I love it, it's great. I would keep it just like this, which I might, I might make another one. Keep this just like this, who knows? No, I'm, no, I'm gonna paint this, uh, and, and I'm probably print a few more of these because they're fun. Uh, but I, I, I love this, I like this. This is a great shape, it's very cool, very cool object, and uh, so let's go paint this. Okay, here we are in my basement. It's pretty cold down here, so we're gonna try to make this as fast as possible because it's quite uncomfortable. So here's the reference we're going for. It's the same reference I used to go and make the 3D model. It's only gonna be three colors, and I found pretty good versions of them at my local Home Depot. The first one is this candy pink gloss. This stuff is not as red as I wanted it to be, but it turned out pretty good with the gold we're going to use, so I'm going to go and stick with this. It's a candy pink gloss by Rust-Oleum. This stuff has been great on all 3D prints I've used, so that's why I have many versions of it. The gold we're going to use is this Rust-Oleum Metallic. This stuff turned the original model, the one that I actually gave to my uh, friend's daughter, uh, it, it made it look beautiful. So this one has less layer lines, it was way smoother. So this should turn out fantastic. And then the last color we're going to use is just a flat white. This is going to be used for the star. That star is going to have a pearl white that I have in craft paint. Uh, we're just going to paint over it, so this will be a nice base coat. I'm going to go and set up a little spot, try to hang everything up so we can get these coated as soon as possible. Okay, so we got everything kind of set up. The first thing is I hung the moon from this wire here. It's exactly how I did the other one. I got the handle. I just put some big hooky thing on it so I can hold it, and then I can spray it from all directions. For the base, 
I had an old brush that's ruined, so I just, there's a hole already in it. And uh, spray paint that gold. All the other pieces just on a piece of wood, and then I can just spray it and move it around. So here we are the next day. We got some coats on all of them, uh, like three coats last night and then another three coats over today. It's a Friday, so while I was working, I just kind of hopped down here, sprayed uh, a coat, walked away, and uh, it turned out really, really well. It's really weird weather right now. It got up to like 52 degrees today, and tomorrow it's gonna go and be only like 16. So it's good that we're getting this done because it just gets colder down here. So this is what we got. I think this turned out very nice. This gold, you can see a little bit of the infill uh, pattern in it, but it looks fine. I, I love it. These pieces here are all painted. This one uh, was painted like this, and I just flipped it around for one more coat to make sure that all the edges are done. The handle right here, this gloss is tacky still. Um, it, it doesn't dry very fast, so I'm just gonna let this sit for the next two days. I'm gonna be gone tomorrow's Christmas Eve, then Christmas, and then I should be back home by Christmas night. So by then, they should be all right. Maybe tomorrow morning, if they are cured well, I'll bring them upstairs to let them sit in the warmer temperatures a little bit. We are almost at New Year, so that's how fast time has gone. But everything's painted and everything looks great. So we got the star. We're going to do a top coat of a metallic pearl white. Another thing that we have to do are these little emblems that go on the side. And see how nice this gold is. I really love this gold. Those three little dots there at the very top, they need color. I don't know what the proper colors are supposed to be. I don't know what they signify, but I just kind of picked a red, a blue, and a yellow. That's all I care about. And we're gonna go and use a few little utensils to try to go and get that paint in those little things. Uh, when those little flosser thing, I ripped th this off. This is like the pick. We'll try that. And also I got a little piece of filament that we'll use. I'll go and get you guys in uh, to this action and we'll get these painted so we can get this together. This gear is just a junk 3D print. I'm just gonna use that as a little palette to go and put all my paint on. I got everything all set. I did put the star on a pencil because it's easier to go and hold. But first things first, we'll just get all our colors. These are really old craft paint. Who knows how they'll react. Yellow is quite liquidy. So I guess we'll just start off with just a light coat, but we'll just spread all this all around and we'll make sure we don't leave any weird spots. The rest of it looks so good, I doubt that this will look bad. We do have a few cracks, maybe we can go and fill them with paint. So I don't know if you can see, this had a little bit of a pearl to it. Put this to the side. I don't know what the colors are supposed to be, so we're just gonna go with red on top. Eh, yeah, that'll work. It'll level itself out. See that? Okay, not the best. Not my best work. I don't remember what I used for my first version of this. And then we'll start with the yellow. Who knows, maybe this video will be completely unusable. I think that worked out quite well. I'll put another coat of paint on the star. I'll let it dry. It's craft paint, so it should be pretty quick. And then we should be able to assemble this thing. Everything's all painted up. The star has a nice pearl effect. I think it turned out pretty well. The colors are all set up in these, so now we're just ready to put it together. The original version of this, I made the mistake of using E6000 glue, which is a contact adhesive. Not right for this, uh, terrible idea, and it came apart. It was it was bad. So uh, just use epoxy. So we're gonna use some five minute epoxy. I think it would be best to go and do it in stages because some parts are gonna be easier than others to glue together. Almost everything interlocks, so we'll probably do those first. Just gotta make sure I do it the correct way because the first time I did this, I did not. The only thing that we really have to go and make sure is that the mating surfaces actually have some type of tooth, some type of grab, something for the epoxy to grab onto both sides so it holds it together. Uh, these pieces that have the dowel, they have enough surface area to not really be a problem. But for these pieces here that kind of sit flat up against here, well, I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife and just score the surface where they're gonna touch 
You won't be able to see it, but it will give a little bit of a nook and cranny for this glue to actually attach to. If you can see the scratches, you probably can't. Uh, they're just very subtle, and I'm pretty sure that should be enough grip to go and really hold these on. I did it to the back of these. Also, just scored it with the knife. That's all I really needed. Up here, uh, where this, the moon's gonna go and be sitting, that also got a little bit of a score, and so did this. We're in a pretty good spot. We'll go and mix up some epoxy. They have to be equal amounts, not so easy in these sometimes. It's fine. This is probably more than I actually need. And five minutes, usually not really five minutes, usually it's more like 10, 15 minutes before it actually starts setting up. So we're not gonna go too crazy with this. That's it, that's it. If you can see, it's not very much and it should be enough. So with this handle like this. So I got some rubber bands. I'm just gonna go and put one on either side and that'll just Hold that in there, nice and even. There's no epoxy squishing out, which is nice. And then, we can do the sides. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually use the rubber bands also to go and hold the sides on. Not the best way to do it. You're supposed to do this in a better, more controlled environment than this. There we go, so that holds that on. They're sitting nice and flat. And there we go, we got a rubber band that will hold all three of these pieces on. Since I'm gonna be holding this, why not, you know, glue up as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna take the star, and I'm just gonna go and load that hole up with a bunch of epoxy. So we got epoxy in the hole. We're just gonna plop that on. We'll spin it to go and make sure that epoxy's touching everything. All these pieces are sitting flat. Everything is sitting nice. I'm gonna take the rubber bands off because I am holding it with my hands. There we go. We're almost there. The last piece is going to be this bottom part. I don't know, can I do this all in one sitting? Can I do this all, or all in one, one go? Is it a good idea? No, it's not. Don't do this. The epoxy's already starting to harden up. But I am a rebel and an idiot. I think we're there. So here we are. We got it done. It looks beautiful. I love this object. You know, I, I didn't know about it before October, and now it's probably one of my favorite projects. I'm super proud of how it came out. Uh, the fact that I was able to go and get the idea or be given the idea to make this on a Saturday and then have it ready for the person that following Saturday painted and perfect. Uh, I'm really proud of that, that I was able to go and turn it around that fast and able to go and make all the pieces and kind of think it out. Wasn't as, uh, as well built as this one here, but, you know, a week is a week. Version 2 took, I think, a two and a half months to actually get done. Probably if, you know, people see this, they're probably gonna ask for the files for this. At this time, I'm not really comfortable with that because too many people will take the files and try to sell them. I, I don't, I, I'm just not in that place right now to go and give away all of this work. And I don't know if this, video gets enough views maybe and enough people you know want you know a version of this then maybe i might release it at some point but let me know what you think or if you have other ideas my next project i already finished didn't record any of it so now i have to go and do version two just like this you know i uh, and who knows how long that's going to take but i'm hoping it won't take too long so i'm going to go and figure out a place to put this on my wall and stare at it for a few hours Thank you very much for following this journey, and have a great 2023. That's going to bite me in the ass. That is going to bite me in the ass.